What's up guys, it's Kayla and Jim. Welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. What are we talking about today? Today we are going to do a case study on Hurricane Barrel. It affected the, boy, everywhere. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> everywhere uh, from the central everything. and eastern, or central and western Atlantic. Mm -hmm. So the, the Greater Antilles, the Lesser Antilles, all the way into the Caribbean. It affected Mexico, it affected uh, Cuba, it affected the southeast and eastern United States, as well as parts of Canada. It covered a lot of things. It really did. And this is a hurricane that took place earlier in the 2024 hurricane season. And what's so significant about this storm is that it set a lot of meteorological records for the months of June and July. But before we get into it, if you find that you are enjoying this case study and case studies like it, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe down below so you never miss the next Meteorology Monday. And now we're going to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's jump into the origins of Hurricane Barrel. On June 25th, 2024, a tropical wave producing disorganized showers was moving west off the coast of Africa, south of Cabo Verde. The National Hurricane Center began monitoring this tropical wave for any future development. By the evening of June 27th, weather satellites were showing the disturbance beginning to organize with curved bands developing around a broad circulation. The center of circulation became well defined enough for the National Hurricane Center to designate the system as Tropical Depression 2 at 2100 UTC on June 28th. At this time, it was about 1970 kilometers east southeast of Barbados. Located south of a strong subtropical ridge, Tropical Depression 2 was steered westward across the central North Atlantic. Environmental conditions were described as unusually conducive for tropical cyclone formation and intensification. Due to near-record warm sea surface temperatures of about 82 degrees Fahrenheit or 28 degrees Celsius, light wind shear 6 to 12 miles per hour, and high mid-level relative humidity values of about 70%. As a result, Tropical Depression II began a period of rapid intensification that would lead to it becoming Tropical Storm Barrel just six hours after formation. As the storm intensified, thunderstorms produced symmetric cloud bands and a central dense overcast. By June 29th, the continued intensification produced an inner core of thunderstorms and an eye, officially classifying Barrel as a hurricane. On June 29th, a hurricane warning was issued for Barbados, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and St. Lucia. The warning was expanded to include Tobago and Martinique. Trinidad was placed under a tropical storm warning, while Dominica under a tropical storm watch. As the storm approached, states of emergency were declared and governments began shutting down. Many airlines canceled all flights to the region. Ferry services were also impacted, with modified schedules and or cancellations. Across the islands, schools closed and shelters opened, housing many people. Curfews went into effect the next day. On June 30th, hurricane hunters flew into the core of the storm and estimated sustained winds at the surface to be 130 miles per hour. Barrow will then be classified as a major Category 4 hurricane. Some slight weakening occurred on July 1st due to an eyewall replacement cycle, but Barrow quickly recovered and continued to increase in intensity. At 1510 UTC on July 1st, Major Hurricane Barrel made landfall in Grenada as a high-end Category 4 hurricane with sustained winds of 150 miles per hour. As Barrel moved through the Lesser Antilles, catastrophic damage was occurring on Grenada's northern islands as well as several of St. Vincent and the Grenadines' southern islands. Over 90% of homes were damaged or destroyed. All vegetation was stripped away and marinas were significantly damaged. Eight people lost their lives as Barrel moved through the region. About 95% of the residents were without power, 
and communication lines were down. The water infrastructure was also impacted severely as the hurricane moved through. Approximately 90% of the Barbados fishing fleet was damaged or destroyed. Flooding, downed trees, and power lines significantly impacted relief efforts. As the hurricane entered the Eastern Caribbean Sea, it intensified even further, peaking as a Category 5 on July 2nd with maximum sustained winds of 165 miles per hour and a minimum central pressure of 934 millibars. Deep convection was swirling around the now well-defined eye of the storm. The Caribbean coast of the Dominican Republic and Haiti were put under a tropical storm warning, while a hurricane warning was issued that same day for the Cayman Islands. 4,000 people were evacuated off the Cayman Islands, and several hundred people moved into government shelters. As the storm moved west-northwestward on the afternoon of July 3rd, under the influence of a strong high-pressure system to its north, the Eye of Barrel passed very close to the southern coast of Jamaica. Despite a tropical upper-level trough producing some wind shear in this region, the hurricane only slowly weakened as it passed south of the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, and the Cayman Islands. Significant damage occurred to homes, crops, and infrastructure. Four people died due to the storm. Over 400,000 people were without power. Wind gusts up to 81 miles per hour, or 130 kilometers per hour, and rainfall of 10.60 inches or 269 millimeters, was recorded on the northeast side of Kingston, Jamaica. Although there were no reports of serious damage across the Cayman Islands, flash floods and mudslides were reported. About 6,000 people were without power, and wind gusts of 54 miles per hour, or 87 kilometers per hour, were reported at Owen Roberts International Airport. On July 2nd, Jamaica was placed under a hurricane warning and a state of emergency declared in preparation for the approaching hurricane. Curfews were set on July 3rd. Gusty winds and large waves battered the region. Storm surge flooding was reported and heavy rainfall caused mudslides and additional flooding across the island. Over 1,000 people sought refuge in shelters as the hurricane passed. On July 4th, the storm continued to weaken below major hurricane strength as the storm's pressure began to rapidly rise. However, this weakening would be brief as Barrel re-strengthened to a Category 3 hurricane later that day. On July 1st, Quintana Roo issued a blue alert, meaning minimal danger. As time wore on and the strength and path of Barrel became more certain, the blue alert was upgraded to a red warning, indicating a threat of maximum hazard from the storm. On July 3rd, tropical storm and hurricane warnings were placed along the eastern coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. In addition, a tropical storm watch was issued for the Caribbean coast of Belize. Residents in the northern part of Belize were advised to prepare for flooding. Flight operations at the Tulum International Airport were suspended. The Yucatan state government activated 2,000 shelters. Schools and public beaches were closed. Around 11.05 UTC on July 5th, the system made landfall just northeast of Tulum, Quintana Roo, Mexico, as a high-end Category 2 hurricane, with maximum sustained winds of 110 miles an hour, or 175 kilometers per hour. As Barrow moved across the Yucatan Peninsula, it weakened to a tropical storm due to the interaction with the land. Heavy rains and high winds caused many downed trees and power lines, as well as damages to buildings and extensive flooding. On the evening of July 5th, Barrel emerged into the southwest Gulf of Mexico as a strong tropical storm. On July 3rd, the National Hurricane Center issued a hurricane watch and storm surge watch for the Texas coast between the mouth of the Rio Grande northward to Sargent. The next day, the Shell and Chevron corporations began evacuating non-essential employees from oil platforms off the Texas coast. A large mid to upper level trough of low pressure over the central U.S. caused the strong high pressure ridge over the Gulf of Mexico to break down. Without this ridge, Barrel was now able to move west-northwestward at 13 miles per hour toward the central Texas coast. With the trough in place, increased wind shear and dry continental air was allowed to be entrained into Barrel, limiting her strength. On July 6th, the coastal areas between Corpus Christi and Sargent were upgraded to a hurricane warning. 
The remaining affected areas north and south of the warning were upgraded to a tropical storm warning. Also, that day, a storm surge warning was put into effect from Padre Island to San Luis Pass, including Corpus Christi Bay and Matagorda Bay. Some residents were under mandatory evacuations, especially in low-lying and unprotected areas. Residents in adjacent areas were under voluntary evacuation orders. Airlines delayed or canceled flights and Amtrak canceled and or suspended operations on July 7th and 8th. As the morning of July 7th wore on, wind shear and dry air entrainment decreased, allowing Barrel to get better organized and strengthened back to a Category 1 hurricane while moving north-northwest around 10 miles per hour. At 4 a.m. Central Daylight Time on July 8th, Hurricane Barrel made landfall near Matagorda, Texas, with maximum sustained winds of 80 miles per hour and a minimum central pressure of 979 millibars. As Barrel continued its north-northeast track, it slowly weakened to a tropical storm just northwest of Houston by 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. By 10 p.m. Central Daylight Time, Barrel weakened further to a tropical depression just northwest of Shreveport, Louisiana. Tropical Depression Barrel accelerated northeast overnight and became extratropical in nature on the morning of July 9th over the state of Arkansas. By the following day, the storm's remnants were moving through the lower peninsula of Michigan, tracking northeastward into Ontario, Canada, before dissipating completely on July 11th. In summary, Hurricane Barrel was the earliest forming Category 5 hurricane on record surpassing the record set on July 16, 2005 by Hurricane Emily. The second Category 5 storm for the month of July, the other being Hurricane Emily in 2005, as well as being the strongest July hurricane on record by wind speed. The strongest hurricane to develop within the main development region, or the MDR, of the Atlantic during the month of June. The second named storm, first hurricane, and first major hurricane of the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. Damaging casualties from the hurricane were widespread, spanning from the Lesser Antilles, Venezuela, the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, and then northward into the U.S. and Canada. In the United States, the state of Texas experienced severe flooding and wind damage, with reports of at least 36 dead in the Houston area. The outer band of Barrow produced a huge tornado outbreak, with 27 confirmed tornadoes across Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Kentucky, Indiana, New York, and Ontario. As of August 27, 2024, a total of 70 fatalities have been confirmed, and preliminary damage estimates are more than 6.86 billion 2024 U.S. dollars. Barrow is the easternmost hurricane to form in the tropical Atlantic in June, beating the mark set by the 1933 Trinidad hurricane. Barrow became the earliest Category 4 hurricane on record in the basin surpassing the previous record set on July 8, 2005, by Hurricane Dennis. Barrel was the strongest June hurricane, as measured by wind speed, surpassing Hurricane Audrey of 1957. Barrel intensified from a tropical storm to a Category 5 hurricane in only 42 hours. Only six other Atlantic storms are known to have achieved this rate of intensification, with Barrel the only one to do so earlier than the month of September. So those are a lot of records broken by one hurricane. That's right. Wow. Incredible. Uh, earliest, Cat 5, strongest, quickest, easternmost. I mean, Beryl had it all. I think she was going for the Olympic sweep on this one. <laughs> Got all the medals on this one. It's incredible how far east it developed. Yeah. How fast it intensified from a depression hours. to a cat Category 5 hurricane. And then its impact from the Lesser Antilles all the way in a big swooping arc up into Ontario, basically. And the damage caused a lot of those places have dependencies on vacationers and, right. and you know, tourism. You know, you have something like that that comes through, it just devastates that whole region. Yeah, and for a storm to be hitting all these places still at the strength that it was at is uh, really, really rare. For most hurricanes, if it hits any part of land, it's pretty much the end of its life, but this one, because of the low shear environment and the waters that it was over being so warm, every time it went back over water, it regained that strength and ended up hitting pretty much everywhere as, as some form of hurricane. And not only was this hurricane devastating, but it also spawned a tornado outbreak. 
That's right. As hurricanes tend to do in some situations, um, you normally see with the outer bands of hurricanes, especially in the Florida region, you'll see up and down uh, that part of the southeast, some tornadoes spin up uh, as the outer bands go through, but for it to hit where it did and to spawn like a tornado alley type tornado outbreak is yeah. absolutely incredible. Yeah, especially in, in the June-July time frame when right. most people associate a tornado outbreak with a strong jet stream and you know uh, components like that coming together. This was primarily triggered from the hurricane and its moisture coming through. So, uh, incredible, incredible event. So there you have it, Hurricane Barrel, which took place in June and July of 2024. Again, if you like what you saw, be sure to hit the like and subscribe down below so you never miss the next Meteorology Monday. While you're down there, don't forget to check us out on social media, Facebook and Instagram popping up here, as well as checking out our School of Weather, which is the first link that you will see in the description box if you want to learn some of the basics of meteorology and also get into how severe weather develops, such as hurricanes. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Chip. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you at the next Meteorology Monday. Heavy rainfall caused mudslides and additional flooding across the island that I didn't name. <laughs> the island.